although two equations are enough to solve all constant acceleration motion problems, many textbooks have five equations just for convenience. Let's take a look here. Remember that there can be five quantities involved and there are four quantities in each equation, which means that one quantity is missing in each equation. This one does not have displacement delta x. This one does not have final velocity v. And this one here does not have acceleration a. This means if you see a problem that does not give you final velocity and does not ask you for the final velocity, this particular equation can be convenient to use. You plug in your three known values and you can find your answer in one step. Of course, it's also perfectly all right to use a combination of two equations to find what you need. Sometimes we can encounter problems that do not involve time t. So it can be useful for us to derive an equation without t. Let's start with these two equations. If I want to get rid of t, what should I do? Often, I would have students suggesting that I divide by t on both sides. So let's see. If I plug in the average velocity, multiply by t, and then I divide by t on both sides. And yes, I do get rid of t, but on the right side only, because then the t shows up on the left side. So I'm not getting rid of t. I'm just shifting the t from one side to the other side. So what do you think I should do if I want to get rid of t completely? That's right. We can substitute t with something else. So first, we have to use one of these two equations to solve for t. Now, of course, that one is easier to use, so that's the one we're going to use. I just have to subtract VO on both sides and then divide by A on both sides. And then I just have to replace T with that. And this gives me so here in the numerator I have x minus y times x plus y. Do you remember what that gives you? This gives you x squared minus y squared. So if you use that, you will get x squared minus y squared, so v squared minus v o squared, and in the denominator you have 2a. Now we just have to move things around a little bit to get to our equation. I'm going to multiply by 2a on both sides. And then I'm just going to move vo to that side, which means I'm going to get v squared equals to vo squared plus 2 times acceleration times the displacement. Now here is an equation that doesn't have time in there. Let's try a problem. At an accident scene, a car left a set of 90 meter long skid marks on a highway before coming to a stop. We know the tires are like new and the road was dry, so we know that the car decelerated at the rate of 7 meters per second squared. Find the speed of the car at the beginning of the skid marks. Again, I'm going to start by listing the variables. The 90 meter long skid marks would be the displacement, which is also the distance traveled, because in this case the car is going straight, no zigzagging, no curving around. To a stop, that means the final velocity is zero. To decelerate at 7 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration, 7 meters per second squared. Now, because it's a slowing down, 
That means the velocity and acceleration are in the opposite directions. If we say the displacement is positive, the object, the car in this case, is traveling in the positive direction, that means uh, the acceleration must be in the negative direction. So the a is negative 7. And you want the speed at the beginning, so you're looking for the initial velocity. No time is given, and you're not looking for time either. That means our new equation can be convenient to use. So that is v squared equals vo squared plus 2a times the displacement. The final velocity is 0. The initial velocity, we don't know. 2 times the negative 7 times 90. If I move this to the other side, I'm going to get 2 times 7 times 90 equals to VO squared. So I just take square root on both sides, I'll get VO, that is about 35.5 meters per second. And if you convert this to miles per hour, you'll find it is about 79.4 miles per hour. This was actually a real story that happened to me. On a family vacation a few years ago, I was driving on a highway in Columbus, Ohio. I switched the one lane over to the right, and shortly after that, I heard screeching sound from behind, and I saw this car rapidly approaching me. So I switched one lane over to the left to get out of the way. But the car still hit my minivan on the right side. We called the police, and each side told the police what happened. Unfortunately, the other driver lied and said that I switched the lane into her when her car was in my blind spot. I told the policeman that there were skid marks on the road and he should look at them. However, he said that he could tell what happened just by looking at the damages on the vehicles. He told me to check the police report later. Since we had a camcorder with us, I decided to videotape the skid marks before coming back home. The insurance companies on both sides relied on the police report, which sided with the woman saying that I switched the lane into her car. Because, hey, the damages will look exactly the same. So we put the video frames together, estimated the length of the skid marks, and did these same calculations to show that the other driver had a speed of 79.4 miles per hour in the 55 miles per hour zone. If we had considered the slowing of that car during the collision, we would have gotten an even faster speed. We presented these calculations and we won the case. See, physics is very useful. Now if I give you one more equation, it will be one without the initial velocity. But I'm not going to bother with that. Because if I get a problem that does not involve initial velocity VO, I can either use a combination of two of these equations to find what I need, or to pretend that the motion is reversed. Instead of having VO accelerating to V, I can pretend that it is V decelerating to VO, which means I can switch VO and V and replacing A with negative A, then solve the problem accordingly. Or, I don't have to use the equations. When I first learned kinematics, I would plot velocity versus time graphs to solve problems. The graph gives me velocities and time. The slope gives me the acceleration, and the area would be the displacement. But since the graph method is not really easier, I would still use the equations for this course. So we have learned quite a few equations. I recommend that you memorize them before moving on to the next video. Write the equations down a few times and think about the meaning for each term in the equations. It may be hard at the beginning, but in the next video we will use those equations again. When you draw these equations out of your memory over and over, you get to strengthen your memory. But you won't get the same effect if you don't already have them in your head.